Welcome back, everybody, to Tech Exceptions. And today we're going to have another exceptional conversation with Angie Jones. And Angie Jones is a Java champion and a principal developer advocate who specializes in test automation strategies and techniques. She shares her wealth of knowledge by speaking and teaching at software conferences all over the world and leading the online platform Test Automation University. Hi, Angie. Hi, how are you? Well, I was super excited to talk with you. I was waiting for it for so many days. So oh. I'm, you know, <laughs> how are you? I'm pretty good. Can't complain. That's perfect. So Angie, you're, you're working for a fantastic startup named Apple Tools. Uh, can you share a little bit, you know, what's the story of Apple Tools and what is it that you're building there? Sure. So Apple Tools uh, is the innovator of visual AI for testing. So it produces um, a couple of products. One is our flagship product, which is Applitude's Eyes, and it's an API that you can utilize with whatever test automation uh, framework or tool you're using. And this does visual testing for you. So it helps um, look at your app with, you know, human eyes, um, well, by AI, uh, but human eyes and, 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 and mindset, and it's able to help you with regression testing there. We also have another product called the Ultra Fast Grid, uh, which enables you to do cross-platform testing across multiple browsers and uh, devices in lightning fast speed. That's super cool. So it is. That's amazing. So basically, when I'm writing a software and I want to test it, you give me another layer. Is that the right way to look at it? That's a perfect way to phrase that because most of the tools on the market that we use for testing, uh, UI testing specifically, they are querying the DOM, the document object model. So that's, you know, your HTML and CSS and stuff like that under the covers, but it's not verifying what it actually looks like, right? So there could be all sorts of issues um, that you can't find just by interrogating the DOMs. For example, if you ask the DOM, is this text present? If it's in the DOM, the, the, the tool is gonna say, yeah, sure it is. But what if that text is bleeding off the edge of the page? What if it's covered by some other elements? What if it's the same color as the background so your users can't even see it? What if it's flipped upside down? What if there's a pink elephant? You know how software is. There's all sorts of things that can go wrong and do go wrong. So this gives you another layer where you're not just testing the back end, but you're also making sure that your application looks the way that it's supposed to look. And that's extremely important um, because these types of visual bugs can be a, a showstopper for your customers. It's not just about cosmetic issues, right? Like I said, if things are overlapping and they can't interact with them, I've seen all sorts of visual bugs and a lot of them have affected the bottom line where users are not able to utilize your application to complete a transaction. Yeah, well, I remember those days with the go, no go of software. It's like you want to go to the release and then you have, you know, the regression testing and a lot of other testing that you need to do before you can say, hey, I'm going to release this new version to, to my customers and to my clients. And there was also the challenge of, you know, you need so much knowledge on, on different systems to, to test UI correctly and to make sure it's validated and all these different frameworks and platforms um, different browsers, different, you know, uh, if you're developing an app or anything of such, so the different uh, app, apps platforms as well. So mm -hmm. I want to I wanna work with Apple Tools. How do I make sure I'm covering, you know, all the different browsers, all the different app platforms, everything that I can to make sure I'm delivering the best software uh, that I can? Yeah, that's an important question because where I see visual bugs creep in, is when you start changing viewport sizes, right? So you might verify your application on, you know, your browser, your one favorite browsers, right? Let's say Edge, and you verify that Edge looks beautiful. 
Okay. Well, what about uh, on laptops? What about on mobile phones? Uh, because, you know, this everybody wants to engage with your application wherever they are. They don't care <laughs> that they're not sitting on some big, huge monitor at their desk, right? They might be on the go and they're still expecting your application to work. So if you want to do this type of testing, the ultra fast grid from Apple tools is absolutely magic, right? Um, the way that this works, a lot of the testing tools, you'll need to write your test, but when you write your test, you would have to consider all of these different configurations, all of these different viewport sizes. For example, let's say you have a desktop application that when it's resized, the elements on the page change, right? We're all familiar with that hamburger menu that becomes available when there's not enough space. There's a limited amount of space, right? So in your test code, you would have to account for all of this. You would have to do a bunch of the conditional logic. You know, am I in mobile view? Am I in desktop view? Okay, here's the code that I execute in either of those cases, right? And that's not fun to do. <laughs> it's um, it's tedious and it's time consuming um, and it's a bit error prone. So ultra fast grid takes you away from that mindset and allows you to do this cross platform testing in a different way. So write your test one time. I'm only writing for age. I don't care about anything else. I don't have to keep up with all of these different mobile elements. And when I'm ready to verify, so I take whatever steps I need to take. Let's say the scenario is I need to create a user and do all of this stuff, right? So I do all of this stuff. When I'm ready to verify, I say, Applitudes, verify this across all of these configurations. Let's say I give it 15 different configurations, right? And in doing so, what the grid is going to do is grab your application in its current state, meaning the DOM, the CSS, the JavaScript, all of this stuff, and blast it across those different configurations in parallel so that it's really fast. And now I've just completed cross-platform testing without having to modify my tests at all. It's, it's amazing. It's so many hours, so many hours invested into testing different frameworks and different browsers. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I, I know you're also leading a uh, university, the testing yeah. university. Well, share a little bit. Sure. So uh, Test Automation University is an online platform. It provides courses on all things uh, test automation, absolutely free. So this initiative, um, I lead it, and it's sponsored by Applet Tools. So what this means is if it's free for users to use and uh, the instructors are well-known uh, experts in the space of testing software. Um, so you get really good top-notch quality material from experts all free of charge. And the courses are video courses, which also include transcripts. So they're self-paced. You take them as you will. And it's been amazing. We're up to about 65,000 users or students. And uh, we started a year ago, We're going on two years now. So it's been really wonderful. A lot of companies have began to adopt this to get their developers and their testers the training that they need. And it covers, uh, like I said, courses on everything like UI, mobile, API testing in all the different languages. So Java and JavaScript and Python and Ruby and all the good stuff. So let's say I wanna, you know, Building on it, let's say I want to get into tech and I want to land my first job and I have, you know, zero knowledge of how computers operate or how, you know, everything works or how to write code. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Yeah. So come to Test Automation University. So it's testautomationuniversity.com. And there's learning paths there, right? So with with all of this knowledge, it's just like the internet. You don't know where to begin, right? Um, and so we have custom learning paths for you. These are curated. And, you know, let's say you say, okay, I want to learn how to do uh, mobile testing in Java. Great. Here's your path. And we start off 
not jumping right into the tools, but we start off in helping you to create the mindset, helping you to create that culture within your company to support this type of initiative. Um, and how, to, how do you go about assessing return on investment, which tools to use, all of this stuff. And then it goes all the way through step by step with the different courses providing you the information. So it's you can take them out of order or you can take them in order and kind of build upon the knowledge. So we've had people who, you know, have come from other disciplines. Uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, one of the ladies who was working in HR and she decides, you know, I want to do something more technical. I want to jump into tech. And she came here to do so. We have programming courses. I, you know, oh, I don't know how to code. Here you go. Here's a free Java course. Here's a free JavaScript course um, from you, for for you. So it's amazing. That's fantastic. And I think it's 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 a wonderful initiative because more people you know, they need the tools, they need the courses, and and they want to get into tech and they don't know where to start. So this is a great a great place for them to to go and investigate and learn and, and kind of get a feeling if that's what they want to do in their life, right? I mean, yeah. It's, Exactly. You never know. We don't know, right? And um, this is a great way to kind of try it on and see if this is fun for you, if it's interesting, if it's challenging, or if it's boring and, you know, something you don't want to invest more time in or money in, right? So you can do this at your with your own time and free of charge. So it's a low investment and a really high return on that. That's fantastic. Um I know that you know at your uh, Apple Tools. If you would wear your Apple Tools hat for a second, I know you also collaborate a lot with uh, with Microsoft and mm -hmm. partners on a lot of different areas. What exactly do you do with Microsoft? Yeah, so our flagship product, Apple Tools Eyes, runs on Azure. Um, so that's been amazing for us. Definitely rely on Microsoft for that. And we also have a tight integration with uh, Microsoft and GitHub stack. So we integrate seamlessly with GitHub, Azure DevOps, uh, Microsoft App Center. Um, you all actually released a pretty nifty uh, test automation framework this year, I believe it was in May, um, called Playwright. So we just built an SDK um, that integrates and allows you to add visual testing to Playwright. So that's pretty neat. Um, and we're also doing collaborations with some of the wonderful uh, folks that work at Microsoft and, and GitHub. So um, I've done webinars uh, with folks like Jessica Dean, uh, Nicole Forsgren. Um, we have Microsoft folks come and do webinars with us as well. And, you know, it's been a, a, a really rewarding partnership. It's fun to hear. It's always good to hear that we can create a fantastic partnership among different companies. Cool. So, you know, last question for you. Um, what tip will you give someone who wants to get into, uh, into tech and specifically into uh, software testing? Yeah, sure. So tech is a really big field. Um, software testing is one small part of that. Um, you can get into tech and find whatever it is that you like to do. So if you, for example, let's say you start looking at testing and you say, ah, I don't really like it. That's OK. That doesn't mean tech isn't for you. Right. There's so many other avenues. There's development jobs. There's some jobs that doesn't require any coding at all um, that you can look into as well. So I think that it's a really wonderful industry to uh, jump into. Find your niche, find your skill. The, it's it's a lot. It's overwhelming at times to figure that out. So if you can maybe find a couple of people um, or, you know, look look at certain resources where people give you a path or, or some type of guide, I think that would suit you well. All right. Thank you so much, Andy Jones, for joining us today and sharing your vast knowledge and experience with our audience. It was lovely to host you, and I'm looking forward to see you online with all your sessions and all your webinars and all the great stuff you do for the community to help everyone scale up and learn. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.